Welcome to Hype in the Streets, y'all. I'm trying to get Dave from Man at Large to tap in real quick, y'all. Let's go. Man at Large, man, from the legendary group Man at Large, Dave Tolliver. There you go. Oh, man, listen. We got the Teddy Riley thing going happening over here, man. <laughs> hey, y'all. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody that's on the chicken in right now, man. I am Big J. And this is Hype in the Streets. Salute to Just J. Salute to the Hype Magazine Network. Uh, and salute to one of my best buddies, man, in the industry, man. He's a legend, legendary artist, man. Y'all, please give it up for my man, T Dave Tolliver, man, from the legendary group Men at Large, y'all. Hey, if you don't know the name, check the cane. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, first off, man, I want to say, man, I appreciate you, man, for taking the time out, you know, to, to holler at us at the Hype Network, man. We're going to get into some questions, man. Listen. Hey, and everything first, is open. First I, thing, man, first thing, how long have you been singing, you know what I'm saying, be, even before you even got in the group, man, at large? I mean, I've probably been singing since I was about four or five years old, man. You know, I started off singing in church in Cleveland, Ohio, baby, Midwest. 216. You already know. That's what's up, man. So how so how did you uh what's the other cause you know for me, and this ain't no disrespect, but you was the only one that I really, really like. You was like my you know, everybody got their own favorite out every group. And right. You was like favorite out the group for me. I so, get that. I, I, I get that. That's cool. So I, I really so I really don't know the other partner as well. What what's what was his name again? Jason Champion. Jason was my original partner, yeah. Jason. Jason, okay. Now, now, how did you guys meet, and how did y'all form the group? Uh, my mom and his mom were best friends for 30 years before my mom passed away. And, you know, it just kind of uh, continued. Uh, you know, as we got older, man, you know, he sang in church with his dad. I sang. But I was also around radio. My uh, my pops was uh, one of the top programmers in the nation, uh, one of the stations in Cleveland. So we both had, you know, musical upbringings, man. So we were always around music and uh that's how it started. We just started singing, 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 singing. And uh, one day we met Gerald at this uh, at this party, man. And, you know, the rest was history. Gerald LaVert, that is. Wow, well, R.I.P., man, Gerald LaVert, man. And um, how long did you guys uh, stay as an active group? To him and I, we stayed together, man. Man, as a, I mean, as professionally signed, we stayed together. We actually signed our paperwork in, like, 90, 91 we didn't come out till like ninety two. We stayed together till almost about ninety seven, man. And uh, then I got with a guy from your hometown, Big Jim and I from Southside, GD seven four, Inglewood, Inglewood, Goose Sable. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I stayed. We I stayed with him through the ups and downs for for a good amount of years, man. We did some things, and uh, you know, but. Um, as time will have it, man, now, you know, Jason and I, you know, they, they craving for that old thing. You know, I want that old thing back. So Jason and I, man, we're going to get back together and do a new record, man, you know, just for legacy's sake, man, and uh, see what happened with it, man. People, been they've been asking for it, man. They want to see them two original fat dudes back together again. And you know what, you know what, man? I will say this. Besides, you know, because I know the music game, they had – a lot of stipulations on being a big guy or a big woman and stuff like that. But I think, for real, for real, besides Heavy D, y'all represented the big guys very good, man. Yeah, you know what? And, and I feel like, you know, Rick Ross and the rest of the dudes owe us a check, man. You know, a funny story. I told my man P.J. Butler the other day. I told y'all the check did, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you did used to be bigger. I saw one of your older pictures. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, I saw Rick Ross downtown at Walters. He was shopping. I was like, what's up? He go, what's up? And I was like, man, you ever heard of Men at Large? He was like, no, man. I was like, oh, okay, cool. That's what's up. I said, yeah, all right, doggy. <laughs> and, you know, I just wanted to drop some hooks, man. That's it, man. You know, I, I'm a man that, you know, I don't, I don't ever wait for nobody to tell me when I can eat. So, you know how we do, man. What's hustle all day? Thanks, thanks, man. So, my next question to you is, uh, what was it like? What was your experience like working and touring? You know what I'm saying with the group. You know what I mean and stuff like that. Man, you know it, it was some of the greatest times of my life, man. Especially, 
during those times, man, we had so much fun, man. It, it seemed like we were always on the road with Silk, H Town, Shy, SWV, uh, man, just all the time. It was just like the core groups. We were always on the road with those guys, UNV, and uh, but but mainly, I think. I think Gerald and them, they, they wanted to keep us close, man. So we were all, even before we were signed, we, when they had us under their production belt, they, we always were on the road with them, man. And, you know, we, they just took us out. They projected us that we had a good time. Uh, man, it's still fun. Even now at almost 50, man, it's a, uh, man, I, I still love it. Like I, I wish that I still was still. So when we dropped me and you dropped this record, we were probably going to roll for like about 200 dates out the year. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, that yeah, road, man. that road, like people don't understand. See, I, me personally, I got other things that I do musically wise by being on the radio and doing right. stuff like that. But people don't understand, like the actual music itself. Being on the road, you got it. It's almost like being a truck driver. Truck drivers only make money when they own the road, right? You know what I'm saying? So it's like for me, and I have like. I don't really like believe in superstition and stuff like that, but I have this thing. So when I'm on the road and I'm gone for three or four days, or however many days I'm gone, I come home and I won't even unpack my bag for like about five or six days because I got this thing. Well, if, if I keep it packed, and I mean I'm gonna keep traveling, and That's most of the time they work like that. Most yeah. of the time, keep that energy going like that. Facts, man. Facts, man. Let me ask you this, man. Why do why does it seem like to me? This is my opinion. It seems like to me you got rappers, you got rappers that beef. But a lot of people don't understand that a lot of R&B cats be beefing too. Yeah, they do. Yeah, R&B cats do beef. I, I just think they that the consensus of people feel like R&B dudes are soft. You know, they don't feel they feel like they lovers and not fighters, and they just feel like they ain't nobody gonna do nothing. But I think there there was a at one point in time, I think uh, who was beefing uh, Jagged Edge and uh, Drew Hill. I know Kyle and uh, <laughs> and Cisco. Hey yo, when Cisco was handling him, it's a video on YouTube. Cisco was handling him, man. He was little dude was handling him. Um, and, and I think at one time too, I think one twelve, and I think I don't know if it was Jagged Edge or maybe Silk had a small beef here. But you know, the guys have a beef, man. But we we kind of squash it out. You know, they were going to do a, um, you know, Greg and Nene Leaks. They were going to do a. A uh, a nineties, you know, uh Platinum R B Kings of a show somebody brought to the table and we were all sitting down at the table. It was me, you know, Bobby V, Jay Holiday, Case, Joe from the Rule Boys, you know, just all the, a lot of the nineties guys. And we were sitting down at the table and, you know, it was the second the second in charge at Bravo and she kinda was going around telling everybody's story. And uh she, we, everybody was just like we ain't doing none of the cat fighting and all this other stuff and this, that, and the third. And she was like, no drama, no check. Bottom line, no drama, no check. So I was like, well, you know, I'm looking around the table. I'm hearing my story. And I said, I tried to start some mess. I said, so uh, I probably need, I said, I probably need this more than all of y'all. You know, I've been through my ups and downs, my highs and lows. I said, but can't none of y'all see me. I said, I picked one of these two dudes, and I said, I, I smash all y'all. What? 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 I said, yeah. I said, I knew exactly what I was doing. Nene looked at me and said, I love you. I was like, I mean, because that's what y'all want. I was like, I was trying to keep the deal, but it never went through, man. But, you know, I, 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 I don't, I think through it all, all of us, even if we would have started squabbing, we still would have been straight in the end, man. We ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. Nah, man. You know, you see all these reality shows with the ladies and stuff like that. You know, they do that. We don't do that. The what was, now, Share the live. <laughs> Share what, the live. What was my next my next question is is um what's what's what would you consider to be in your opinion one of your favorite songs that you ever wrote as the, when y'all was in a group man at large? Ooh. I it will probably have to be um Probably let's talk about it just because, I mean, that record is, is so dope. And, and that album for me was like my coming out party from from everything that I was scared of, you know, with my talent and, and, and everything else, man. And uh, let's talk about it. It was such a dope record, especially when R. Kelly and them did the remix for it. I mean, that song. And then we got to do the, the video with Hype Williams. 
and the whole experience of that record uh, was just that. That's my I think the, my favorite record from both albums. You know, the remix, not the yeah, yeah. That, that's that would be the one because it was just so, the whole thing was just such a dope experience. Period. That's dope. That's dope, man. Now a lot of people don't know. Some people might know, but I know if people don't know. I seen a couple gangster movies you was in. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> one of, one of, I think one of them was, was it filmed in Atlanta? They both were, I think, recognized. Yeah. And being yeah. recognized, too. How, how was your experience with that? You know, inside, I'm a gangster, man. On the real, on the real to inside, I'm really a gangster, man. I'm, I'm soft as baby mess, but... Uh, I've always been fascinated with uh, crime, organized crime, mob, stuff like that. So, you know, and for me, I'm always imitating or, or, you know, mocking somebody. So, you know, that was easy for me to do it because I love those type of movies. Like, I'm always rooting for the bad guy. Like, I, for some reason, I don't know, I just like rooting for the bad guy. So those roles in that movie, I don't know. You know, I freestyle. It wasn't, no, it wasn't a script. You know, big up, big up Terry Miles. It wasn't a script. You know, I played. Terry Miles, oh boy, I know Terry Miles. Oh, head. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it was, you know, it wasn't a script, not for that. And, and uh, we just, just kind of went for it. You know, you dig into, you know, when you when you're an actor, you know, they tell you put the backstory behind it, and you know, you just put you put yourself into that wasn't my life, but you know, when you become an actor, you put your you put your life into, or you put your my you go to a movie or something, and you figure out. The backstory was this young dude was killing our business on the south side by doing business half backwards, cutting the prices, the quality, everything. But everybody was running there, so I was like, "Yo, we gotta kill him. <laughs> we gotta kill him." Right. Yeah, man. Now, can, now can we look? Can we look forward to you doing any more TV or acting anytime? Soon? Uh, most definitely, man. Uh, I'm working on my own projects, man. I've just been kind of moving slow with it. Uh, with my man, my man, C Love. And some other things, a couple movies, um, definitely more plays. Me and Tony Terry doing some stuff together and uh, my own projects uh, as well. And, uh, yeah, I, man, I'm, I got my hand in everything, man. You know, as long as her legs open, I'm going in. So what about that new big jig record? I heard you see you working on projects. You working on that? Oh, we definitely working on a new big jig record. I'm just waiting on them to send it over, man. You know, I got, uh, you know, my solo stuff I'm working on music-wise as well as uh, – I'm working on, uh, you know, doing some Southern soul, man. Some, some still doing my R and B, but also doing some inspirational and gospel stuff. And I'm just kind of all over the board, man. I, I've been moving slow since this quarantine, but you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm laying it down, man. I'm slow out the gate with it, but we're gonna be locked in for a while, so we got time, man. If you don't, if you don't take this time to do nothing, shame on you. Because when the when the gates open back up, and they, I mean, when they really open back up, everybody gonna be running it to recover and spend money to make their money back on stuff. So you better have something new because people going to want to see you up close and personal and they're going to want to, you know, what, I mean? what up, Donnell Jones? What up, homie? Donnell Jones, what's up, boy? Shout out Donnell Jones in the building. You next, Donnell. I got to interview you, bro, on here. But, um, yeah, man, Um, I heard your, that wreck at home. You know, I've been playing because, you know, I'm on iHeartRadio, all y'all. I'm on radio. Yeah. I've been playing Shut my boy. Dave. I've been playing my boy Dave Wreck It, man. Um uh home. I love that record, man. Yeah. What 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 is that what what inspired you to, to come up with that record and you know how long has it been out? If I tell you if I Everybody tell you I had to kill you. <laughs> no, nah, man, you know, we were uh at the time that I don't release that record like a few different times, man, and uh I just was in my head space. I was kind of frustrated about something. And uh, we were, me and my partner, Carl Borton, we were in Boston, man. We started playing it. Like, a lot of times, people were just, like, I'm good at freestyling and stuff. So, you know, like I'm talking about, like, coming off the dome with stuff. So it's like he, he started playing the track, and I was like, I can't wait to come on. And, uh, and, you know, I started mumbling, and I was like, yeah. And it just it just came to me. You know, I just, just started thinking about, you know, vibes a lot. Like, for me, I, I'm like, I do R and B, but I like the studio pack with 15, 20 cats if, if we can do it. And I'll be like, give me a topic. And then I just start writing about it. A lot of the stuff I write about might be about somebody else's situation as opposed to my own. That's what's up, man. Definitely. And I also heard uh 
a record by your daughter DNA, man. She, I, the fire. Give it up for Dave's daughter, man. She is fire, man. Shout yes. out Derek Dean and my man Adrian Meeks. What up? Yeah, my daughter, man. She is uh she's something else, man. You you know, by the way she acts though, you would think she was a star already. But she is in her own right, man. She takes everything so serious, everything. And I'm like, you can't really put that much stress on yourself yet. On one side, it's good like that. But I said, you don't want to pressure yourself out the moment because you'll make your, you'll fall out of love with stuff when you, if you put so much pressure on yourself, you won't be able to enjoy the moment, man. So I'm working with her on that. But yeah, man, that she been singing me under the table for the last three years. And uh, she writes and composes her own stuff. Going, I went to the room the other day and she got songs charted out and written. And so, you know, we just got to go to the studio and put it down, man. She's dope, man. She is dope. Oh, and I'm also doing a record with, uh, uh, you know, uh, Derek Dean is a Grammy-nominated writer. And she has all these songs that we're going to do these multiple uh, R&B great records. That, so we we reaching out to folks now to put that together, too. She got all these records. So, yeah. What up, Nick? That's what's up, man. Definitely, man. So let, let me let me ask you this. What would you like the fans to know about you that they don't know? <sighs> that I'm probably better than the, than the guy that you like the most in your CD player right now? No. Uh, <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> uh, I, that, um, I, man, you know that um, – that I'm that I'm probably the realest dude in the game, man. Seriously, like I, I just there's nothing phony about me. What you see is what you get, man. I'm I'm transparent. I'm I'm very approach. Well, they probably know I'm approachable, but I mean, just that I that I I'm I'm do or die with this, man. There's there's nothing, you know, fake about what I do, man. What 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 you see on the screen is exactly what you're gonna get. What you're in the radio is exactly what you're gonna get when we hang out. I, I'm not gonna change. I can't change. I'm going to. Uh, you know, just be the same old day, three, two, eight, three, all the time. You know what I mean? That, that's the only thing I think of. I mean, and when we get off here, I'll probably have about 10 other things I could say, but that's a good question. But yeah, I don't, I don't, man, just that, man, that I'm, that I'm better than your favorite singer, that too. That's it. That's dope, man. That's dope, man. And if you could go back in time and tell your younger self anything or give any advice, what would that be and why? Man, wow. I was just talking about this earlier today with one of my uh, ex-business managers, and I was telling him that uh, back then things happened so fast, and we didn't have proper management, and we were seeing the money come in, but it wasn't going to us, and you know we had the same type of deal as Silk H Town, not H Town Silk TLC and Tony Braxton and. The only thing that we didn't do right was go back and renegotiate our deal. So right. during the time, we thought that we were so, man, two fat dudes who really didn't have a lot of favor growing up. Well, a lot of girls like me more than them, but I'm just saying, man, we was going in the malls. They was closing the stores down. They was kicking it out because of too much ruckus. They was chasing our cars down the street. Hey, hold on, hold, hold on. Did you, you, said, you said girls like two more? Oh, yeah, man, definitely. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hey, to the point where he'd be like, hey, man, you go out on stage first. You know they like you. I'm like, all right, let me go. Let's go. So um, let me quit playing. But, yeah, that's the truth. Um, and, uh, you know, we want it out of our deal. I would have never left. And, I, and I, I, I won't tell you what. I'll tell you off screen what we did to get out the deal. But I'm waiting on Unsung to call because that's going to be the, oh, I can't believe y'all did that to get out the deal. I would have never left out the deal because in the beginning, they didn't know what to do with us. And they didn't know if they really, to me, they really didn't know if they wanted to keep us on, but they weren't going to drop us because Gerald and them were high on us, but we weren't seeing what we thought we were supposed to see. So we wanted out of our deal. We got out of our deal and nothing else happened for us nationally wise. I mean, I did my thing touring the national plays and stuff like that, but nothing else for the group really major, major. We got nominated for a couple of awards independently. Uh, in 2015, we went to number 14 with a record called Date Night, which is an accomplishment because, you know, out of all the 90s groups, only like a handful of them have charted in the 2000 era. So 
you know, man, I would have never left Germany if I'd have known what I know now. And simply because back then it was honor amongst thieves. contract was they wasn't going to touch it out of respect for Gerald and Eddie Levert. They were the most revered cats in the business at the time. Now, if a group like us with the success we were having, oh, yeah, yeah, come on, we got y'all. Y'all got y'all deals? Yeah, we'll sign y'all right now. Let's go, let's go. Back then, it was honor amongst these. They wasn't doing it, man. So, you know, we kind of, uh, I, I would have never done that. You know what I noticed, though, man? I noticed that a lot of cats that, you know, uh, maybe I, I would—I probably say a, maybe an era or two before mine. That when y'all, when you guys was game at, at y'all young age, it seemed like they was doing a lot of screwing over other artists than they is now. Yeah, you know and there was I mean? no way, and there was really no way for you to find out. Yeah, in your contract, you had clauses where you can go back and audit their account once a year, but if they knew you were coming. Why couldn't they go and fix it? It wasn't like you was going to do a surprise or that you had to set an appointment to go to the office and be like, boom. I mean, how could people like the OJs or New Edition or group, major groups like that, how could you ever go through broke times if you had your stuff all in order? I'm, you know what I'm saying? You sold hundreds of millions of records and you, I mean, that's because Caps was only getting five to seven cents a record. I'm saying, and then they were taking... Uh, they're recouping their money plus taking an extra 10% off the top. So I'm saying, how do you make money back? But I, I offer that unless you make, you was only making show money. And so as black people, the first thing we do is go blow it on cars and houses because we was trying to catch up from what we didn't have, you know? So, I mean, you know, she's, she going to do bro. Yeah, that's, yeah. You know, you know, it's great. It's yeah. great. Unfortunate. But I think too, man, because you guys, one thing I would say, man, is I appreciate, even though it's, it, it might not be a good thing on you guys' behalf, but I appreciate what y'all went through because y'all really helped us because y'all went through the shit that we didn't have to go through, so y'all really saved us. You know what oh, yeah, We took it up to Wazoo, man. We yeah. took it with no Vaseline, man. We did. And, you know, when you sign through, and, you know, one of the biggest things I can tell people, man, is just don't sign under another brand. When you right. signed under another brand, you you really screwing yourself anyway. I mean, they going to – because if you come in and you, and you were growing as fast as we were, you know, you put fear into an insecure person. If right. they feel like, well, I ain't getting my just due, but these dudes is burning and they – and they go, and the people going crazy over them right now? Oh, no, nah, no. Nah, we're about, we about to put a halt to that. We're about to slow it down. No, nah, don't get them that. No, nah, don't give them that. No, nah, uh-uh, no. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, they don't need to do that, even if it, if it will work out. And then you losing out, you know, you you getting buried in, you know, in their shadows. So we was like, we out of here. And, you know, right. I'm still right. good. My man's still good. We about to come back and, you know, since you've been cussing, we about to come back and shit on these folks. Real talk. It's going down. Share the live. Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, that, that's how you got to do it. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, man, please tell everybody where they can find you at, man, how they can find you, how they can keep up with Mr. Dave Tolliver. Uh, man, everything is Dave Men at Large on Instagram, Twitter, and all that jazz. Uh, follow me, Dave Men at Large. Make sure you share the live. It's just Dave Tolliver on, on Facebook. <laughs> Dave Tolliver. And uh, check me out tonight at 9 o'clock. Uh, it's uh, the Dave Tolliver Show on my Instagram. I'm doing a talent night tonight. So any of you guys out there that uh, that have any talent or think you have talent, you know, I have executives and, and, and popular artists and people on there that might be able to do something for you. You never know. Nine o'clock tonight, the Dave Tyler show. Come check me out at Dave Minute Large. Share the live. Y'all know what it is. Hey, man. Dave, we appreciate you, bro. Thanks again, bro, for coming and chopping it up with us at the Hype Magazine Network, man. Once again, man, this is my boy, man, Dave from Man at Large, legendary yeah. recording artist, man. Salute to you, bro. Keep grinding. Keep it with me, bro. We got to get that record done, fam. For sure. We, I mean, just send me the track, whatever you figured out. Hey, and tell them if they don't know the name, check the chain. They don't know the name, check the chain, man. <laughs> yeah. Salute to you, bro. I appreciate you. Much love, yo. Much, much love. Yes, sir.